greetings to all in the last lecture we have discussed the sizing equations with respect to the volume product and dql equations and d power 2.5 l equations we have discussed in this lecture we will discuss the generalized procedure for designing a any type of electrical machines like what are the steps we have to follow for designing the electrical machines okay first step step 1 we have to define the basic requirements or specifications okay as per the specifications only we have to start the design procedure first we have to define the basic requirements and specific or specifications then we have to decide the what is the type of emission which type of a machine we are going to design it whether it is induction machine or synchronous machine or DC machine or BLDC. So, which type of motor we are designing next which type of construction like a internal uh, interior rotor or exterior rotor. which type of rotor we are constructing okay we can see here this is one example for inner rotor this is the stator and this is the inner uh, inner rotor this machine is a induction machine where inner rotor and outer stator and rotor is a type of squirrel cage so we have to decide which type of mission we are going to design so let us say induction machine we are designing then squirrel cage or slip ring induction motor which one first we have to decide that thing at the first step okay after that we have to see and we have to follow certain type of standards okay and then initial specifications initial specs like efficiency torque or with respect to peak torque breakdown torque and rated one and torque at the blocked rotor condition and speeds okay different requirements we have to note it down that is the step one next step is step two in step two we have to find the main dimensions of the mission main dimensions of a machines we have to decide that is inner di inner diameter of the stator outer diameter of the stator and core length etc for calculating main dimensions we have to select the magnetic loading values and electric loading values precisely these are the two terms rel related to the electric loading and this is the term with respect to the magnetic loading okay we have to select as per the material how up to what limit it is feasible like 1 to 2 tesla if you are selecting for certain kind of material for iron we can consider up to 1.5 tesla to 1 a 1.8 tesla for steel what is the maximum possible flux density okay similarly for different type of materials what is the maximum possible flux densities which type of steels we are utilizing it and what is the maximum flux densities and then bh curves okay we have to analyze everything and then we have to select the magnetic loading without any saturation then electric loading values and current density values we have to select and based on that calculate the main dimensions once the main dimensions are done that means we know the stator inner diameter we can see here we know the stator inner diameter and stator outer diameter and how much length of a machine we know it now 
the next point is we have to design this stator core like what type of winding is there or what type of winding is required and how many number of turns and how to select the laminations and what is the size or uh, area of the stator slot and how much back iron we should keep it width and how much teeth width we have to keep all those things we have to calculate it that is with respect to the stator core design ok where slot geometry type of winding and number of turns per phase and then area of the slot and materials already considered, but for making the windings and uh, core laminations and what is the lamination thickness ok and number of slots ok. All these things we have to say, uh, design with respect to the step 3. Next case step 4 next step we have to see rotor design. Now we have done the stator right here after doing the stator design now we have to do the rotor design rotor in the rotor design we have finalized which type of rotor we are utilizing it for example squirrel cage rotor how many bars we should consider and what is the skewing angle and what about the end uh, rings of the uh, rotor and then what is the shaft diameter like for example for handling the high torques the shaft diameter may be different for handling the uh, higher speeds at lower torques the diameter will be different like inertia will be different and depends upon the application we have to design the rotor ok. So, in rotor design we have to see the rotor geometry and torque or speed requirements based on that we have to design the rotor and then type of winding. and then materials and laminations, number of slots and then and then one more thing is bearing requirements. what type of bearings we are uh, we have to utilize it to make the uh, design for example for higher speed different type of bearing arrangement required for uh, higher torques different type of bearing arrangement so based on that we have to design the rotor structure after this thing we have to analyze the machine parameters in step 5 In the step 4 for example, permanent magnet rotor is there. So, what kind of magnetic material we are we have to utilize it there there is no winding. So, then uh, what is the BH curve properties and then how to handle the required torque and speed what is the magnet volume and everything we have to calculate it accordingly ok whether it may be induction machine synchronous machine or BLDC permanent magnet machines any mission the same steps we have to follow to get the design of that particular machine. The next mission parameters with respect to the equivalent circuit uh, model, equivalent circuit parameters, then losses and then torque values like what is the peak torque, what is the uh, blocked rotor torque. and then what is the rated torque ok different type of torques we have to calculate it and efficiency 
and then different inductances and okay different inductance values leakage mutual magnetizing all those uh, inductance values and resistance values we have to calculate it in the step 5 in step 6 we have to determine the or we have to verify the saturation limits saturation limits to meet the required torque rating torque or power rating after doing the analysis up to step 5 we have to verify whether the core uh, may saturate or not we have to verify it and then for a given torque rating or for a given current we can validate that thing after that thing once the validation is done with respect to the given torque and uh, power ratings this is nothing but I can say validation step. If the requirements we are meeting then no need to do the iterative procedure otherwise we have to do the iterative procedure. Okay. From step till to reach the given specifications again we have to go back to the step 2 and step 3 4 5 6 7 we have to do it after this thing we have to check the standards for final design like IEC standards and IEEE standards and NEMA standards we have discussed right in the design of electrical machines lectures. Okay. Based on these standards we have to make the final design. Okay. This is step 8. The next thermal design we have to see. Based upon the uh, final design whether what is the temperature rise with respect to the losses and depends upon the rotational speeds and torques any temperature rise is there or not we have to verify it and appropriately we have to design the thermal design thermal system if requires we can push this step as above step 8 and then validation with respect to the standards we can make it as step 9 first we will do the thermal design then uh, make the final design with respect to the standards at the end we have to verify the figure of merits step 10 figure of merits is nothing but with respect to the magnetic shear stress that is psi m sigma m and then torque to weight ratio and then power to weight ratio after designing the machine we have to compare with respect to the other machines right there we have to see the figure of merits or comparison parameters torque to weight ratios and power to weight ratios and magnetic shear stress also we can see the efficiencies for a given power rating. These are the design steps or design procedure we have to follow for designing of an electrical machine whether it can be induction machine or a synchronous machine or permanent magnet machine any type of machine. Okay, these are the basic uh, steps. With this I am concluding this lecture. In the next lecture we will see the induction machine design as of now we have discussed the generalized principles for a design of an electrical machine with respect to the sizing equations like main dimensions and standards and then procedure we have discussed. Thank you.